Okay, so welcome to this ECSE virtual tutorial. Um, the focus of today is to give you an insight into some of the processes and procedures involved in submitting an ECSE application, and it's got a particular focus on the new KNL system and application for the new KNL system. I should say that much of this information or all of this information is available on the website. So just to give you an overview, the ECSE program provides funding for the Archer user community to develop software in a sustainable manner. Now, the Archer user community not only includes uh, the normal XC30 system, but also the new Xeon Phi system. So uh, ECSE applications can be focused on this system. And our objective is to sustain the key codes for the UK computational science community. We're looking to facilitate an efficient use of Archer resources, um, potentially by enhanced code performance or functionality or sustainability. And we're offering a not-for-profit service. So um, the aim is to provide value, value for money to the user community and beyond. One of the th emphasis we have is on supporting and encouraging early career researchers. So um, early career researchers, for example, can be PIs on the project, and we're happy to support them in this endeavor. Here's a few examples of ECSE uh, work that's been funded under the ECSE program. So for example, implementing algorithmic improvements within an existing code. Improving the scalability of software on higher core counts. Improvements to the code which allow new signs to be carried out. Um, and or porting and optimizing a code to run efficiently on Archer. Now in that context, again, that applies not only to the XC30 system, but also to the Xeon Phi. It could be about adding new functionality to existing codes. And also code development, which takes a code from the tier two system, so the regional systems, to the national level, to the Archer system, potentially bringing on new communities onto uh, the Archer platform. That's new scientific communities. And I'll talk about that in a few slides. The XC40 Xeon Phi, well, proposals for this can involve the development of code to prepare for new tier, tier two systems, as well as for Archer but I'll talk about that in later slides. And I should emphasize that the funding here cannot be used for scientific research. The idea is that this supports and facilitates the science, but doesn't actually perform it. New communities. So uh, while we still encourage proposals from established Archer communities, we also like to encourage proposals from new scientific communities. Now, the emphasis here is on the scientific area. So the community is the science area, not particularly the code. So we're looking for scientific areas that are not currently exploiting the Archer system. They're likely to have a scientific need for Archer, um, but need greater computational power than is available at the regional level. A new code to Archer does not necessarily make it a new scientific community. It could be a new code that's going to be used for an established community. In this case, we would just encourage you to consider approaching one of the existing consortia and seeing if you can work with them. The panel will look to look at the proposal and any that are um, have been submitted as new communities. They'll look at these proposals and make an assessment as to whether they feel it is a new community. If they decide it's not a new community, it will simply be considered with any other existing uh, proposals or existing community proposals. So we have three regular calls a year, and we're currently on call nine. This closes at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, the 11th of October. That's a hard deadline. You'll, as I say later, uh, your information is submitted via the SAFE, and come four o'clock, you won't be able to submit after that. Most projects are between three and 12 months. Three further calls are planned. So we have one that goes live in December. 
and we have one that goes live in March and then one that goes live in August, which takes us up to about a year before the end of service. So how does the process work? Well, a call opens and um, we are available to give whatever guidance is needed. The call went, After the call closes, however, the first thing is a technical review is carried out. The technical reviewer looks at um, all the work that's been noted and if they have any questions, you'll get these questions back. You'll be given a fixed period of time to respond to these questions. Once this has been received, all this information is sent out to the panel, um, and I'll talk about them later. The panel then meet in a, uh, a panel meeting, and our list is created, and successful applications are um, are told at this point, and feedback is provided to any unsuccessful applicants. After an ECSE call, after an ECSE call open, proposals are submitted via the SAFE. If you follow that link, you'll find out more details about how to do that. You can also find out more information and guidance at this link. If you have any questions um, before the submission, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can do this via the help desk and it will be assigned to a member of the CSE team. So funding can be requested for staff located at the institution of, your, of the PI or for third parties, or for staff from the centralised Archer team, or some combination of the above. Early career researchers and support staff can be principal investigators. Uh, there's no restriction here. The only thing is the PI institution must be UK. COIs can be elsewhere, but the PIs uh, must be UK based. And you can find further details of this on the web, but it's very similar to the process followed by EPSERC and NERC. The panel will look at the and try and assess the ability of the technical staff member to do the work. So they'll be looking at the experience of the staff member. Now, not every staff member has absolutely perfect skills. So they'll also be looking at the expertise of the PIs and COIs and whether they have the, you know, whether they've noted that they'll be able to support the member of staff and also any training that's planned during the, the ECSE. So we are committed, it's a not, this is not for profit, so we're committed to an average of 14 FTEs per year, um, and any additional money that is left over will be put back into the ECSE. In terms of the technical effort, effort should be specified in person months, but costs are paid uh, as 80% of full economic costing. So it's exactly the same as the way you would do if you were submitting an EPSRC proposal. We are also looking for details of any existing funding that exists for the proposed technical member of staff. Uh, this is partly to ensure that um, the work hasn't already been funded elsewhere. We provide a relatively small amount of CPU time uh, in order to be able to complete the work. Um, exceptions can be made, and if you need further time, you should request it at the time of your application. However, it's worth noting again that um, the ECSE isn't about carrying out scientific studies, and there are other routes to obtaining CPU time, such as the RAP panels. So if you're looking for large amounts of time, I would suggest you get in touch first and we can help you to see what's the best option. You can request travel funds for the technical member of staff, but not for the PIs or COIs. Travel fund is very limited, and it's limited to a number of visits between the, the different COIs or different partners on the project. Um, on average, we would fund a trip every three to four months, uh, and that's within the UK. If you want to make a request for more than that, um, you can do, uh, but please make sure you give good justification. The ECSE programme doesn't fund impact related activities such as workshops or attendance at conferences. 
We also ask for details of any previous projects or proposals, either ECSEs that have been completed um, or proposals that um, were potentially unsuccessful the first time around. There's two stages to the reviewing process for ECSEs. The first stage involves a technical review and the second stage a panel review. With the technical review, this first of all we carry out an administrative check um, just to check that all the information is there and then applications are reviewed by our technical advisors. advisors. The majority of the technical advisors are part of the Archer centralised CSE team However, if there's a conflict of interest, such as a proposal from the University of Edinburgh, then these go out to a group of external advisors. So we have four or five external advisors across the UK. And again, they're looking um, for missing technical detail. If there's any questions um, or requests for further information, they'll be sent back to you. Uh, they will be sent back to you you, your applicant will be given the opportunity to respond and uh, the, yeah, be, you'll be given the opportunity to respond. You'll not be able to update the original proposal but uh, any additional responses uh, you can add in extra information and they'll be submitted via the SAFE. All the information will be supplied to the panel. If for any reason you wish at this point you can withdraw and submit to a later panel. Each application is independently reviewed by two panel members prior to the panel meeting. They have a list of guidance and the assessment criteria and our panel meeting usually takes place within around eight weeks after the call closes. The panel can decide to fund, to not fund or indeed to fund in part it's relatively rare that they would fund in part, but it may be that they find they believe one part, one work package is not within scope and they may recommend that only part of it is funded. Uh, the panel can also fund with requirements. Again, this is usually exceptional, but they can make suggestions or, or propose improvements. There's a robust conflict of interest process in place and a confidentiality process in place. We have a system where a small number of early career researchers can, early career researchers can be present as observers. We had a competitive selection process to select these people and we will be opening a new call in the near future. The assessment criteria, um, the panel will look at the track record of the applicants, including all the team members, and they're really looking to understand that the work can be completed in the time scale by the individuals involved. If the project is applying as a new community, they will look at that uh, justification. They'll look at the technical content, so the context. So they'll be looking to see that there's enough information there and um, to give confidence that the work proposed can be completed and that the objectives can be achieved. In terms of benefits, they're looking to understand why is the work needed, what are the expected benefits. They're looking for scientific benefits, computational benefits, and indeed benefits to the Archer community. So it's worthwhile looking at where the software will be at the end of the project, how will it be made available on Archer, for example. There's a pathway to impact, so you, they're looking to understand what sort of impact the work might make and what sort of activities um, would be involved to take it there. There's a work plan detailing all the management and technical work and resources. And then there's an overall grading of the overall quality and objectives. A few things to remember. Keep in mind, um, it is important to note the specific benefits to the Archer community. So you're looking at things such as the availability of the code on Archer after the work is complete, and who will utilise the improvements and for what sort of activity. So you're looking to be specific here. Uh, yes, if it's a large code, it is um, interesting to know how many users will benefit 
And um, if there's a significant number of users will benefit, that's obviously good. But also the panel are looking for specific examples, people who can maybe say that they really need these improvements and that it will help their science. License requirements. There's no specific barrier um, on Archer or for an ECSE. It can be any type of license, but the panel will be looking to ensure that the license doesn't create a significant barrier for Archer users to access it. Uh, and the end result must be to use Archer. So it's not acceptable to look for funding uh, for other platforms. The objectives are important. These, where possible, should be measurable and quantifiable. And again, new communities, if it's a new code but in an existing area, it's unlikely to be a new com community. You're better off uh, investigating existing consortiums. Travel. We only fund travel for the technical member of staff. I've mentioned this already. Uh, and we, I've also mentioned the technical staff experience. I've talked about the evidence as well, scaling evidence being important. But I should mention, if you do need help here, then please get in touch with the CSE team. We can offer advice and even help you with uh, obtaining some data, but obviously not just before the deadline. And I've mentioned existing funding before. The final decision will be sent to applicants together with feedback from the panel. This is usually around two weeks after the panel meeting. Unsuccessful applicants will be provided with constructive feedback. In a small number of cases, applicants will be encouraged to speak to the CSE team um, and to potentially prepare a resubmission. It is worth noting, however, that doesn't mean that it's, it's going to be funded next time round. Any resubmission will be treated in exactly the same way as any new proposal. So what happens if your project is accepted? Well, a contract is set up and the Ar an Archer project is set up for you with your CPU hours. You'll be given a contact point if you have any issues and we'll be looking for you to engage with the Archer community. Um, for example, after the project finishes, there'll be a final report which will go up on the website, but also uh, there'll be a request for a webinar for the community. And all projects are showcased on the Archer website, so you can see a list of completed projects um, with a summary, a, a, a short case study. So some guidance specific to uh, ECSE applications for the KNL system. This is obviously new for this call. ECSE applicants can apply to develop on the KNL system, um, and the existing ECSE application guidance applies. So all the, the guidance and the selection criteria are the same. By Archer system, the Archer system includes both the XC30 and the KNL system. But a few notes specific to KNL. In terms of the proposed technical staff, again, the panel will assess the technical expertise of the applicants. They'll be looking to see if the work can be completed. Um, however, if the technical staff member has no or limited experience on KNL, that's um, that's a possibility with it being such a relatively new machine. What the panel will be looking to, to see is they'll be looking to assess the overall expertise of the member of staff. For example, are they experienced in software development or HPC? But also looking um, at things such as the sport and experience of PI and Kauai. They'll also be looking to see if the member of staff is planning to attend any training courses. In terms of time on the KNL, as with all normal ECSE proposals, all successful projects will be awarded a small budget to be able to complete the work. But again, it, there won't be a large amount of time available to do other, for example, scientific runs. The amount awarded for the KNL will be commensurate with the amount we award to normal projects on the Archer XC30 system. And again, there are other mechanisms to gain larger amounts of AUs, such as RAP panels. In terms of technical information, 
So this panel will assess the technical information in a KNL proposal in exactly the same way as a standard Archer application. However, they will have guidance that reflects the more speculative nature of the hardware. So, you know, it is likely that there will be less concrete technical information available. They will acknowledge that the KNL, KNL applications may have less scaling evidence and or previous results, for example. However, the panel will still be looking for you to show some kind of evidence that the proposed work you want to do is suitable for the KNL and achievable and that is likely to be beneficial. So they are looking to understand why you think the KNL will be a useful platform for you. In terms of benefits for the Archer community, firstly the KNL system is just part of the Archer system as a whole. So again, we're looking at things like availability of software for Archer users, any licensing restrictions, etc. It's also worth noting that the existing Archer key could still benefit, even if it's not directly on Archer. It may be about future. We may be making a case that the benefit is for future Archer or the next generation of Archer machine. For the for KNL applications specifically, the benefit may also include future tier two systems. So it may be of direct benefit to future tier two systems rather than so much for the Archer system particularly when this involves a close integration between Tier 1 and Tier 2. So if you're looking for further information or guidance on how to make a KNL application, um, there is some specific information now in the ECSE guidance at this link. Okay, so I think that's um, all the information I had. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Bye now.